Thank you for choosing to view this video of our Sunday morning worship experience through God's Word. I pray that you will be blessed uh, for your time spent with us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would keep us, lead us, and use us in your service for your glory and for the uh, upbuilding of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The series I'm preaching on is titled, Love is More Than Just Words. Love is More Than Just Words. Today's sermon title is, God Sent His Son. The text for today's sermon is found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 through 11, the English Standard Version. It reads, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now, last week we had the question, what uh, is God? It was answered in the sermon last week titled, God is Love. This week, what God did is the question. And the answer is, God sent his son. Because God is love, he must communicate not only in words, but in deeds. True love is never static or inactive. God reveals his love to mankind in many ways. He has geared all of creation to meeting mankind's needs. Until man's sin brought under uh, brought creation under bondage, man had on earth a perfect home in which to love and to serve God. God's love is revealed in many ways that he dealt with the nation of Israel. The Lord did not set his love upon Israel, nor choose them because they were more than in number than any other people. For ye are the fewest of all God chose them. Because the Lord loved you, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, according to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 8. Chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, rather. Now, the greatest expression of God's love is in the death of his son. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. According to Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the New American Standard Version. The word manifested means to come out in the open, to be made public. It's the opposite of to hide or to make secret. Under the old covenant, God was hidden behind the shadow of rituals and ceremonies, according to Paul's statement in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, that reads, For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. But in Jesus Christ, the life was manifested. First John chapter one, verse two says, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was made, which was with the father and was made manifest to us. He that had seen me, said Jesus, has seen the Father. Why was Jesus Christ manifested? 1 John chapter 3, verse 5 says, And you know that he was made manifest to take away our sins. 
For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Where did Jesus take away our sins and destroy or render inoperative, powerless, the works of the devil? At the cross. God manifested his love at the cross when he gave his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And this is the only place in the epistle where Jesus is called God's only begotten son. Now the title is used in the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14. And it means unique. The only one of its kind. The fact that God sent his son into the world is one evidence of the deity of Jesus Christ. Babies are not sent into the world from another place. They are born into the world. And as the perfect man, Jesus was born into the world, but as the eternal son, he was sent into the world. But the sending of Christ into the world and his death on the Christ on the on the cross rather were not prompted by man's love for God, but they were prompted by God's love for man. The world's attitude towards God is anything but love. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet against God, while we were yet God's enemies, Christ died. Two purposes are given for Christ's death on the cross. The first one is that he might, that we might live through him. And the second one is that he might uh, be the perpetuation for our sins, which brings about our justification. His death was not an accident. It was an appointment. He did not die as a weak martyr, but as a mighty conqueror. Jesus Christ died that we might live through him for and for him and with him according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. A sinner's desperate need for is for life and because he is dead in trespasses and sin according to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 it is something of a paradox that Christ had to die so that we might live. We can never probe the mystery of his death, but this we do know, that he died for us, according to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, that reads, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The death of Christ is described as a perpetuation. John has used this word before in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. So there's no need to really go into great details again, but we should remember that perpetuation does not mean that man must do something to appease God or to appease his anger. Propitiation is something that God does to make it possible for men or mankind to be forgiven. Again, propitiation is something that God does to make it possible for mankind to be forgiven. Now, God is light. And therefore, he must uphold his holy law. And God is love, and therefore he wants to forgive and save sinners. How can God forgive sinners and still be consistent with his holy nature? The answer is the cross. There, Jesus bore the punishment for our sins and met the just demands of the holy law. But there's also uh, where God reveals his love and makes it possible for mankind to be saved by faith. It's important to note that the emphasis is on the death of Christ, not on his birth. The fact that Jesus was made flesh 
according to verse, according to John chapter one, verse 14, is centrally an evident of God's grace and love. But the fact that he was made sin is underscored for us. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21 says, for our sake, he was ma uh, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The example of Christ and his teachings uh, allowed the whole earth to receive life, and the life of Christ finds, uh, in the life of Christ, the whole earth finds true meaning and fulfillment on the cross. For the second time, believers are exhorted to love one another in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. This exhortation is a commandment to be obeyed and is the basis uh, of the nature of God. God is love and we know God and therefore we should love one another. But the exhortation to love one another is presented as a privilege as well as a responsibility. If God so loved us, we are also to love one another. We are not saved by loving Christ. We are saved by believing on Jesus Christ. But after we realize what he did for us on the cross, our normal response ought to be to love him and to love one another. It's important that Christians progress in their understanding of this great love. To love one another simply out of the sense of duty is good, but to love out of an appreciation rather than an obligation is even better. This may be one reason why Jesus established the Lord's Supper, the communion service. When we break the bread and share the cup, we remember his death. Now, few men, if any, want their death remembered. In fact, we remember the life of, of a loved one and try to forget the sadness of their death. But not so with Christ. He commands us to remember his death. He says, this do in remembrance of me. And we should remember our Lord's death in a spiritual way, not merely uh, sentimentally. Someone once defined sentiments as feelings without responsibility. It's easy to experience solemn emotion at a church service and yet go out to live the same defeated life. But true worship and true spiritual experience involves the whole man. The mind must understand the spiritual truth and the heart must love and appreciate it. And the will must act upon it. Now, the deeper we go into the meaning of the cross, the greater will be our love for Christ and the greater our active concern will be for one another. We've discovered what God is and what God has done. But the next foundation uh, takes us even deeper into the meaning and implications of Christian love. And because we're out of time, you'll have to come back next week. I know you've heard that before. Somebody on this same YouTube channel, the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel, someone usually say often, you'll have to come back next week. And we'll discover next week what God is doing. And remember, on the cross, we see what God did. He sent his son to die to pay the price for our sins. 
He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and for you and me, he died. They buried him in a barred tomb, but early the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Power to help us to love right. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping us, leading us, and using us for your glory in this uh, video. And we pray now that you would give the increase that the body of Christ, through your word, may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, mask up, practice social distancing, uh, and wash your hands often. And work it out within yourself, whether it's right or wrong, whether it's smart or dumb, to take another vaccine, the uh, vaccine for this coronavirus. We've had many uh, vaccines. I've already had one vaccine this year, which was my second vaccine for uh, pneumonia. Uh, the latter part of last year, I had a vaccine, which was the flu vaccine. I've been taking vaccines uh, ever since I arrived here on earth as a baby before I knew who I was, who my parents were. I knew uh, my mother and my grandmother and my older brother, how they looked. But I was taking vaccines back then, polio vaccine, diphtheria vaccine. And I've been taking vaccines for a long time. So this one does not scare me. If you have a reason not to work it out with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is saying, come, let us reason together on the matter. And he'll show you what to do. And then do it. That's all I've got for today. We'll see you next week, same place, same time. In the meantime, be careful, be safe, and love one another. For that's more than just a commandment. It's a responsibility that we love one another. And it's an opportunity to express God's love. So take care. Bye-bye.